everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dedicate our video to exploring Twilight Grey Acid Dye Powder from Derma Trading Company. This color is awesome. It looks like just a plain grey, but this color really breaks into like these blues and reds and has this bright vibrant moment when you're using the dry powder on yarn. And I've actually seen this color behave very differently over the years. It broke from, I would say, a like a bluish gray to a purple on non-superwash yarn the first time I tried dip dyeing to break it. But then other times I get something that's like a little bit more navy and I don't see the breaking. So I actually have a video, Dye Pot Weekly number 135, where I dove into this color and dip dyed it in different ways to just kind of see if I could get it to feel differently. I'm playing with this color again recently and just a quick swatch was like, this is gorgeous. This is doing like very interesting things with the powder and it made me want to dedicate a whole episode to this awesome pre-mixed color, which honestly just doesn't feel very great. Before we go a little further, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to my lab partner today, Gretchen. Gretchen, thank you so much for being my lab partner and I really hope you're gonna enjoy these fun colors that we're gonna create low immersion with just Derma Twilight Grey. For just a quick look at the actual powder, I did put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. Whenever I'm dealing with dry dye powder, I'm always wearing this personal safety equipment. I love when I rediscover a color I've been wanting to play with. So Twilight Grey, the swatch is this bluish gray color, to be fair, and I have been able to achieve something like that before. Um, and the powder does look very sort of navy, nondescript. But now let's go get set up so that way we can play more with this color. Today we are going to play with Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% superwash merino wool and it takes up color really, really beautifully. And so I'm really excited to play with it today. I pre-soaked our yarn in some plain tap water for about 30 minutes or so. We will dye 200 grams of yarn at a time and let's start with a lighter speckled approach before we go in heavier. I'm realizing that I could try to speckle this twisted up but maybe we'll do that with a color that uh, I know a little bit more what to expect. Or we could repeat it with Twilight Gray after we just speckle this. So I just added six cups of water and I'm now gonna come in and add, I think I'm gonna do two tablespoons of white vinegar. So we now have some acid here in the pan and I'm just sort of moving and mixing this up. Now I do have these skeins laid out so they're sort of circular that way and I am spreading it as much as possible. With this water level, there is plenty of water in here, but most of the yarn is above the surface of the water. If you want even sharper speckles, you want less water in here than what I have, but I don't mind getting some spread, even though uh, we are mostly not going for the spread of color, at least in this, this case. I typically get the sharpest speckles when I do, well, I guess a combination of few things. I get the sharpest speckles when I mix my dye powder with some citric acid powder. So that helps dilute the dye a little bit so I can spread it out more. And then if I do the speckling on the countertop followed by steaming, these speckles will be super, super small. And that's partially because they don't come into contact with a lot of liquid, so they don't have a chance to spread very far. When they dissolve onto the fiber, there's not really anywhere for it to go, and that's why those speckles are so much sharper. In an immersion situation, since there's liquid, occasionally the dye might strike water first and then have a chance to spread before it hits the yarn. Uh, and that can happen if I'm using citric acid or not. One of the big perks of citric acid the, the acid does come into play probably a little bit, but I think the bigger perk 
is diluting the powder so you don't accidentally add too much because if you add too much powder in a spot then you're definitely going to get some spread because there's just more dye there so we're not using citric acid we are just going to be using my gloved fingertip while i'm masked <laughs> to dye this yarn. The pan is nice and hot, so I'm gonna reduce the heat to low. It is easier to speckle when it is not super steamy. And now I'm gonna come in with the color. I'm not sure if this is a little lower because the dye is a little more compressed, or if I've used it more than I remember. And so I took up a tiny, tiny little pinch of the color you can barely see it on my glove, holding my fingers together. And as I move over the yarn, I am slowly rubbing my fingers together to allow the powder to slowly fall onto the yarn. And you can see that we're getting some large speckles and the colors are streaking in some areas. Uh, it's okay that the speckles are, I think at one point I had like a little bit almost of, not obsession, but I was really focused on getting like the sharpest speckles I could and the smallest speckles I could. But now I'm actually, even though I like little dots, I don't mind when they spread a little bit because that gives you enough color to really show up on a stitch and have a little bit more impact. So it all depends on the feel you are going for. The one thing I would say when you're going about this and using your dye directly from a jar is you really wanna make sure your fingers are dry before you go back into that jar. Because if your fingers are wet, uh, then you'll introduce moisture into the jar and that can make the dye clump and go bad sooner. So will it be, whoop, that was a bigger splotch. I'm gonna correspondingly do a little bit heavier in a spot over on the other skein. Um, there will be differences, but a lot of times with hand dyed yarn, you'll have differences between skeins. So what can we see right now? Let's take a closer look. Right away, a few things probably stand out. <laughs> We've got red and blue and then probably therefore some purple where these might land together. This particular area is an area where those colors sort of spread out a little bit more because there's maybe a little more water in that area. But over here is an area where those colors are much more at the surface. So they are still fairly sharp, but not quite as spread out. But I just wanted to play and see what kind of colors I feel in here. I do see a little bit of some yellows showing up in some areas as well, which is interesting and fun. So I could move this right now. And I think that in some areas, if I went in with a spoon, the colors, some of these colors are probably set <laughs> and maybe wouldn't spread and give us much of a halo or other color right now. But other areas where the dye might be a little heavier, may not be set yet. So we'll go ahead and wait 10 minutes and then we'll flip and dye the other side. All right, let's flip this over and get a feel. So I see some reds come through on the other side already. This is one reason why it's fun to do uh, speckles with these colors that have, that break. And this is a color that breaks with dip dyeing, but also breaks with speckling. So remember that not every color, not every time you use a dye and you see multiple colors in the pan, would that necessarily translate to being able to separate hues with, with dip dyeing and see the colors break apart in that kind of way. But now, let's speckle. When doing a speckled technique like this, you do want to keep an eye on the water level because if the pan goes dry, you could burn your yarn. I don't often bother covering my pans. I do sometimes if I want things to stay warmer and go a little bit faster, but I don't always find that to be really necessary. So I just keep an eye on it and if needed, I would probably add like a cup of water, maybe a little vinegar, but 
that may not have been necessary for this project. I knew that I was gonna need to flip this skein more than just one time because the yarn isn't as spread out when, as it could if I only had, say, 100 grams of yarn in the pan, but I did wait at least five minutes, probably closer to 10 minutes, in between each flip to give that color time to strike to the yarn as much as possible before flipping it. I could have waited even longer if you don't want to see any spread, but I didn't mind if we end up with more of like a pastel blue or pink backdrop on these speckles. It's more to just sort of feel what this twilight gray is doing and how it's behaving on the yarn. Well, I'm very satisfied with this coverage and with the colors. So I'm now going to just add some water so things can be more free moving. We can make sure all of the powder is nice and dissolved, and I will heat this for another 20 minutes. Now that we have finished a speckles where we waited to flip, I just realized I added a bunch of water to this pan. Uh, so I guess I might as well, well, I'm debating, actually no. We're not gonna reset the water. We will use this water. It's a little bit more dilute with the acid's a bit diluted now, but we will go ahead and use this water. And so I'm gonna add the next 200 grams of yarn to the pan. And this time we're going for a more speckled tonal type effect. And actually, this is good. Even with this amount of water, we still have yarn at the surface. But this time, instead of just speckling and leaving it, we're gonna speckle and move, maybe do some splotches and move. And so this, there will be a lot more movement involved with the yarn, which means we'll get different types of effect with the color. At least that's what we anticipate. The dye bath is still warm, so, but uh, I just turned the heat back on. So we're gonna just sort of see what the color wants to do and how it wants to be. I'm going a bit heavier. You'll notice that I'm going a bit faster and less careful with my speckling this time. And honestly, I haven't decided if I want to shimmy it with a spoon or if I'm just going to flip really, really quickly. Uh, I'm sort of making this one up as I go along to have fun with this color. This one for sure. Ooh, look how purple it is. I noticed in the other one when I'm wiping my fingers that the dye was very purple. But this time I'm gonna use the excess dye on the yarn. All right, well let's let's do the spoon first and just see, ooh, check out that breaking. See how we have areas that feel so much more blue and red? Oh, this is so fun. Ooh, look at that red. Now, we may end up getting something that feels less broken overall because the more we move things and layer things, the more blending we will have of these blues and reds. But I think that it's still gonna be like really awesome and fun. But we can see, yeah, so not everything has set right away. I'm not expecting it to be that fast, but I think that this, We'll speckle on the powder, give it a tiny bit of time, and then move it is going to be a really, really awesome tonal from one dye mixture. I think one thing that is really working in our favor right now is the fact that the like red and blue proportion in here is... Uh, well, I mean, actually, I have no idea how even it is or not, but it is like working well in that we have a lot of both pigments. Some colors that break with speckling have like mostly all one color and then you'll randomly get a bright green spot. And that can be frustrating to people. So it's good to play with colors and get a feel for them before you plan a colorway with speckles uh, if you want your speckles to do something specific. but. Some colors are definitely trickier than others. But yeah, look at how red what is left on my fingers is as I go in. Each time I go back uh, to set down the dye jar, 
I am screwing in that lid. And that is because like, I don't want to risk spilling anything, but oh, this is fun. I mean, again, we may end up with something where we don't feel all of these different hues as much in the final yarn, but it's just so fun. And as we go on, we can always, well, there's a bit of yellows. Um, we can always add less movement and speckle more. Just depends on the effects that we want. And so as for which technique is faster, I mean, I think that this way with like lots of movement is technically faster because you don't have waiting steps, but uh, I think it could be, the other one could be in theory just as fast if you're doing a lot of pans. So the amount of time that I'm spending at the dye pan is very, very similar. And this is just a fun way to just keep building the color here on the yarn more and more. And you can see that we've got this like pastel bluish gray all over right now. And that's just because some of these pigments are striking much faster than others, but they're also just separating in the powder, which is giving us this beautiful multicolored effect that otherwise could end up feeling just all or mostly one color. So it just makes it extra fun. So again, some people aren't a huge fan of color breaking uh, and you know, they're colors that don't break. And so those might be ones you may want to consider using for various projects. But I'm of the opinion that breaking is wonderful and you should try to take advantage of it. <laughs> so, so it's another tool in our box of crayons that we can take advantage of as dyers. And so and there's something very freeing about this, but you know, depending on how like the first batch went, I could have decided to wait longer uh, between flips, you know, there's, there's various ways to play with this. And as I'm flipping and I'm doing more flips, what I'm looking for is not that everything is equally like dark or saturated, but I'm looking for a uh, balance and yeah, it's okay if things are a little uneven. It's hand-dyed yarn after all. Uh, imperfections are part of what makes this magical or else we would all deal mostly with commercial solids. But uh, it is fun. I think having slightly less acid in here is also working in our favor uh, because it's letting these colors spread out more. So again, Different dye colors might behave slightly differently at the heat. The heat is still really low. We're not even that, it's definitely warm, but it's not very steamy yet. So that is just worth keeping in mind. But this is just very, very fun. <laughs> feeling really satisfied. The color is really rich and stormy. And so I'm going to turn up the heat and add some water and a little bit of some acid. But now I'm just going to let things heat for about 20 minutes and then we will turn off the heat and let it cool off in the pan. But what a contrast to our speckled yarn. When I removed this twilight yarn from the pan, I noticed there was some yellow residue and we've got some almost brown patches that were on the bottom of the pan. This 
lingering yellow that sort of shows up at the end is something that some colors do. Something about some of these yellow pigments. And maybe, is Twilight Gray one of those pre-metalized colors? Something about yellow pigments and some of these trickier colors take longer to dissolve and to bind and just behave a little differently and def definitely break. I think that it still very much works with the yarn, but I was surprised because I wasn't expecting to see that hue. And so is this the mystery brown that happened at one point that I couldn't explain or understand? I don't know. But I think that if I didn't want this to happen, a solution would have been to remove the yarn from that dye bath when I had the color the way I liked and then steam setting it potentially uh, might have helped because something maybe about the heat also seemed to come into play. I don't really know. But we are gonna go and wash uh, this more variegated yarn along with our speckled colorway. These look so nice together. Ooh, Gretchen. Whenever I dye multiple colorways in a lab partner video, I always send my favorite to the lab partner. And I'm definitely gonna reserve judgment for when this is dry as to which one of these is my favorite. But I'm very excited and we are currently not seeing any color come out. I'm definitely seeing the sort of green and purple hues here in this tonal that I had seen before when I had dip dyed. But I think that if the colors all, if you get the colors all able to bind a little bit easily, then uh, I must add some, just so, if you can get all the colors to bind a little evenly, then you might see less breaking overall. So let's see. I am not seeing anything come out. We do have a lot more pigment on that more variegated, almost tonal yarn than the other one. But I'm now going to finish rinsing out the soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to dry so we can look at the finished colors. But ooh. Oh Gretchen, these are so beautiful and I just really love that we got this combination of all of these colors from just Dharma Twilight Grey. That's the only color that we used. That's the only, certainly it's a premixed color that has lots of pigments in it, but we created something feel, that feels so magical. The speckled yarn is very much predominantly blue and red. There are some hints of yellow that may not come through super well, but I feel mostly blue, then with some red and purple hints, and then very, very rare pops of yellow. Our more heavily layered color, where we allowed the dry powder to spread. We didn't give it time to sort of set in speckles, even though we do have speckles here, but we have more of the tonal colors. And I feel looking at this sort of a greenish gray and then a purple in here. Those are the two real colors that really come through. But we do have some brown patches. So here's one of those areas and it really did surprise me. I don't think it's showing up as, eh, it's kind of showing up as it does in person. It's not a big impact on the color, but it did seem to happen on the bottom of the pan. And I've observed with other colors, like say avocado, that some of those yellow pigments take a lot longer to dissolve or bind. And so sometimes you have like this bright teal and then at the end you get the brown sort of payoff. But I also know other dyers have mentioned that some colors, and I don't think they were talking about twilight gray. I think maybe they were talking about uh, gunmetal or blued steel, or maybe both. I don't know. I think one's Dharma, one's Jacquard. But some of those colors may end up looking more brown depending on when it comes into contact with either acid or heat. I have not observed in a controlled way those turning brown like on purpose. I think the only times I've seen some deep blues sort of shift brown has been a complete surprise and I've used other colors so I didn't know what to expect. But yeah, so I don't know if this is just because of heat or if it was just some yellow pigments that took a little bit longer to show up. I don't think that the colorway is ruined 
at all. I think it's still really, really beautiful. So at least there's that. I want to give another huge shout out and thank you to my lab partner today, Gretchen. Gretchen, thank you so much for being my lab partner. And I have been sitting here debating which one I'm gonna send you. And I still don't know. It's hard. Okay, I think this more tonal has a slight edge for me. I think that it is really cool and very, very unique. The speckled is also beautiful and really fun, but I think that this tonal has a slight edge uh, for being my favorite colorway that we created today. So Gretchen, thank you again, and I really, really hope you will love your yarn. If you would like to learn more about how you can become a Dye Pot Weekly lab partner and get some hand-dyed yarn featured in a video along with shout outs along the way, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There are two different listings. If you sign up with the Dye Pot Weekly lab partner listing, you pick the yarn base, tell me some colors to avoid, and then I will go film a video with you in mind. Or you can sign up as a last minute lab partner where you get to pick from a video I've already started filming. You pick the yarn base, but you can also see some details about the technique and colors that I used. And then I will film some shout outs to include in the video for you while I am editing. Uh, and so that is the last minute lab partner. You can find more details in the listing descriptions, but please feel free to reach out to me on Etsy if you have any questions about either type of lab partner. I am such a fan with how these colors have turned out, and I will say that at this point of having filmed over 300 episodes of Dye Pot Weekly, I don't always remember all of the videos and techniques I have done in the past. In fact, I forgot that I had a whole video dedicated to dip dyeing yarn in Twilight Gray until I was like just at the beginning of filming the video and wanted to go see the looking for the broken dip dyed effect. So I had forgotten that, <laughs> which is a little embarrassing to admit, but is also fun and I think shows that how even having filmed hundreds and hundreds of videos, I still feel I have a lot to learn and to share and new things, new to me things that I want to try. And so I really hope that you enjoy this whole journey and please make sure you're subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. Uh, I publish at least two videos a week and I think we have a lot of fun. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching.